This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Sam Davidson with me. You're the manager of health promotion at the Rideau Community Health Services. Uh, which office are you at today? Today I'm at our Perth site. You're at our Perth site. And you, there's a few offices. I think you've got Perth, Smith Falls, Merrickville, if I understand correctly. And Brockville. And Brockville yeah. as well. And Brockville yeah. as well. So how long have you been with them? I've been uh, at RCHS for just over a year now. Okay. And, and what is it you do? So um, as manager of health promotion, I oversee our counseling team, our social workers, um, our community health worker team. Uh, so those folks are really uh, working with community members to navigate systems. So uh, it might be connecting people to um, food security, income supports, housing, transportation, you name it. The community health workers can uh, help folks navigate um, accessing services and resources. Um, also on our team, we have a kinesiologist and um, we have an addictions um, worker who works through uh, Ontario Works for Lanark County. So it sort of sounds like you hold the umbrella of all these services. <laughs> we we uh, hold down the, the piece of, of mental health is really the... Um, is the focus of the health promotion team. It, there's a little bit, you know, all of these things are in, interconnected um, when you're talking about the social determinants of health. So it's a little bit of everything, but mental health is the overarching piece of what we do. Okay, okay. Now I know during COVID, mental health uh, was very prominent and, and people, you know, realized that they needed help. We were going through a whole different time then too. So that must have uh, been a busy time for you. Absolutely. And honestly, it hasn't stopped being busy. Um, and it's it's what has sort of really been the impetus of what I want to chat about today is our, our new social prescribing program. So what we've seen at, at the center is that um, a, a really significant increase of calls that are coming in, both um, from our rostered clients with our primary care providers, but also through other um, community programs and services we offer, is in an increase in calls um, and folks presenting with mental health um, issues. And, and it kind of runs the whole gamut, but in, included in there is, um, you know, feelings of isolation, loneliness, and being disconnected from community. Absolutely. Now, I knew today you and I were going to talk about health and wellness and social prescribing is what you called it. I've never heard of that before. What is social prescribing? Yeah, so social prescribing is a sort of a means to connect community members to a range of non-clinical services in the community. And it can look like a whole lot of different things. Um, so for us, what we want to see uh, for our social prescribing program is really building community, connecting folks to others, um, and sort of reducing and re removing some of the barriers to participation in social engagement activities or in community that people face. And what we find is that a lot of folks are coming to visit their primary care providers um, and they're presenting with issues that are really not medical. Um, and so some of those folks get um, sent over to our community health workers and we're really working on um, some of the concrete items around the social determinants of health, like poverty, food insecurity, housing, those things. Um, but there really is also the social component piece that we were talking about. Um, you know, when COVID happened uh, and so many programs were either in-person programs were either canceled or moved online, um, that connection to others was really damaged. Um, and for everybody, uh, I think every single one of us felt that in some way or another. Um, but folks who are living rurally and are isolated and may, maybe don't have um, great internet access really felt um, that disconnection in a big way. So, um, yeah, I can talk a little bit more about exactly the nitty gritty of what social prescribing looks like, if that helps, because it is kind of a confusing concept. Absolutely. Absolutely. And maybe some examples, too. That'd be great. Yeah, so um, how we see it happening is that someone um, either visits their primary care provider or they can self-refer or be referred in from other community agencies or programs within RCHS. But really it's about having a conversation with folks about what matters to them, what they value, what they would like to see more of in their life, and then uh, helping them get there. And so for some folks that might mean they just need assistance with transportation. Uh, for 
for instance, maybe they're living in Merrickville and they really want to attend um, a, a program at the mental health support project in Smith Falls and they just can't get there. Uh, so that's an easy peasy. We're just going to help provide that transportation for them. Um, for others, it might look like uh, they want to take part in an activity, join an art class, um, get a membership at the pool, uh, and they just don't have the funds to do that. So we can help supply um, equipment, you know, for art classes, hiking clubs, um, or memberships. We, we just recently helped a community member get a membership for the pool. And for others, it's the companionship piece. So, um, you know, they've really always they want to get out and get walking, but they aren't inspired to do so by themselves or they don't feel safe to go out on their own. And then it's connecting them with someone in the community who's already doing that activity um, and is willing to have someone join them. And so what we really want to do is build um, a volunteer program that is not your typical volunteer program where we, you know, we're listing on our website that we need people to you know, for instance, we ha we have a food cupboard at um, our Merrickville site, and uh, so we might say we're looking for you know a volunteer on Tuesdays to pack up bags for you know this amount of hours. That's a really standard volunteer job description and and program. What we're looking to do is to build a roster of volunteers of people who want to just do what they love to do. So maybe you're someone who goes kayaking um, and you have two kayaks and you'd be willing to take somebody else, you can call us and put, we'll put your name on the roster. And if we can match people up that way, um, that's what we're looking to do. So we're really looking for people to, to donate their time and talents um, doing things that they already love doing and would be willing to do with somebody else. And you know this is this is great. What I'm hearing too, because I have I have a social work background too, and and I'm I'm hearing we're talking about accessibility. So many times people think accessibility is ramps and 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 lifts and wheelchairs that sort of thing, and so often too the barriers are financial. The barriers are environmental. The the barriers are, I just can't get there. I need a friend sort of thing, and we we talk about that. And that's exactly where what where I'm what I'm hearing is you're helping with those kind of barriers people have. Absolutely. It's super important to us to sort of to, yeah, just exactly that, to reduce the barriers to participation. And that can look like a lot of different things. The other piece of this program that's really important to us is to com is to support community agencies that are already doing things right. Like we don't want to recreate the wheel. Um, so if somebody comes and they, you know, they are looking to, to do some artwork, um, can we find an agency in the community that's already offering an art program? Um, or can we support community agencies in some of the work that they're already doing? So maybe an agency is um, offering a meal. Uh, can How can we support that community meal to keep it going um, and uh, and just really help other community agencies to keep up the good work that they're doing? Absolutely, and it's, it's not all about, you know, if you're volunteering your time and you're taking uh, you have to do something different. It's 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 time putting out on something you're not already doing. You're already doing it. Just have somebody join you. So have somebody come and and, uh, and share in your talents and share in your time with something you're exactly. already doing. Yeah, and I think what's really also kind of neat about this program is that, um, like I said, we all felt the impacts of COVID on our social life um, and our feelings of of belonging with others. And so this program really uh, gives the opportunity for both the people who are participants and the people who are volunteers. It, it's the same, everybody's getting something out of this. You know what I mean? Like it's the benefits are um, equal for both parties. That's right, that's right. I mean, during COVID too, technology was our, our best friend, but not everybody had technology. People, not, not everybody, imagine, don't have a phone. Some people don't have a computer. They don't have internet, so they can't connect the way that uh, most were doing during COVID. So that they, they lost everything, lost all sorts of connections. That's exactly right. That's yeah. right, that's right. And, and I think that's one of the really actual beautiful things that did come out of COVID is we did start to see these mutual aid groups and I think we did as a whole, we kind of really did recognize the importance of community. Um, and so I think people are really eager to to build on that and to, um, you know, build on those connections again. 
Uh, there was a, 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 a big group of people we recognized during COVID that didn't have these uh, connections and that they had to make it happen on their own. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. So you are in the, I'm sorry, you said the Perth office today. Whereabouts is that located? Today I'm in the Perth office. It's on Sunset Boulevard um, in the old Brown Shoe building for people who, who remember that. Um, and it's a, it's a small office. We share it with um, ConnectWell. They have their lung health program here. Um, but yeah, it's, our, it's, it's probably our smallest satellite office. Small but mighty. That's right. That's right. So can people come and visit you there or how, how do you how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, they can drop in here. Um, if people are interested in volunteering, uh, we'll very soon, we just recently got a grant to build up this social prescribing program. So we're kind of in the early stages of laying out all the groundwork and we're just sort of figuring it out ourselves. Um, but if people are interested in knowing more about social prescribing, they can call in um, at 613-283-1952 uh, and they can um, uh, call extension 247 and that's Joanne Franey. She's going to be uh, the community health worker that is really leading up this program um, and acting as the community navigator. So when we do get referrals in for social prescribing, Joanne will be meeting with folks 